Welcome to Excel Magic Tricks 862. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, click on the link below the video. Hey, we have three sets of numbers. So here, the first one is 1, 2, 3. The next number is 5, 5, 4. We need to, down here, count. So in column A, I have the criteria. I need to count how many zeros are in column A, how many ones are in column A. The trick here, though, is we need to exclude numbers that have digits that are the same. So because 5 and 5 are the same, we cannot use this entry in our table up here when we're counting down here. This one we can use because 8, 1, 2 are different. We can use, we can use, we can't use because they're all the same. We can't use because 3 is listed twice. All right, the first uh, and easiest way is to add a helper column and simply check for each record whether the digits are all different. And then the formula down here, we'll use a, a straight uh, count ifs, because uh, we'll have two criteria or uh, some product in earlier versions. All right, so the trick up here is, hey, we'll use the AND. Now, the AND function is great. It allows you logical, more than one logical test. If they all come out true, then we'll, it'll, the AND will deliver a true to the cell. And what are we checking if they're all different? So if they're all different, AND will check all the possibilities and deliver a true. Well, we first have to check, hey, is that one and the, the uh, syntax for not is less than, greater than? Is that one not equal to this one? That's the first logical test. It comes out true or false. Comma, we also have to check if the first one is not equal to the last one. Comma, and finally, we have to check and see if the one in the second column is not equal to the one in the third column. Right? When all three logical tests come out true, then AND will deliver a true. I'm going to double click and send that down. So here, clearly, we could see it found 5 and 5, so it could deliver to false. Here, all of them. Here, just the three. Now, when I first did this, before I did the video, I, you know, this one's nice because we're doing not and using the and, but I actually first thought this. I would check to or to see if they're all the same. And if or got a false, 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 which means none of them are the same, that means or would deliver a false. And then the not function, it exists just to turn falses to true. Uh, so there you go. All right, so either way you do that, once we have this helper column, then it's pretty straightforward. All right, down here we'll use uh, 2007 or later. Since we have two criteria, we'll use the count if, not count ifs, not count if, but the S means we can check for more than one criteria. All right, the first criteria range is this. So I'm going to highlight this, and I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it in all directions, comma. And now what's the criteria? True. The next criteria range is this column. However, when we copy it down, we need it locked. But when we copy it over, we need the dancing ants to move to the next column. So I'm going to hit the F4 key once and twice. Lock the row reference, but not the column reference. Comma, and what's the criteria? Well, for 1, 2, 3, this first row in this counting table, we need to check a 0. I'm going to hit the F4 key one, two, three times. So the column reference is locked. So when we move this way, the dancing ants are locked on 0. But when we move down, the 15 will move to 16 and get the next criteria. Control Enter, double click and send it down, and drag it over. And then you can manually, manually go through and check. Um, let's see, the 5. So let's check the 5 in column A. There's a 5. Oh, but there's one here, so it should not be counted. Uh, there's a 5 here, and it should be counted and because they're all different. So it looks like it's working. And you could go through and check that. Now, if you don't have count ifs, then you use sum product. Sum product is great. It can multiply arrays. Now, what is our first array? It actually is anything in here F4 equal to. So when you're using sum product, different than count ifs, you have to actually directly compare the range to whatever it is you want to check, and in this case, true. Now, some product cannot uh, count trues and falses. So if I highlight that and hit the F9, we see there's trues and falses. The uh, one very efficient way to convert these trues and falses to ones and zeros, so then the sum product can multiply. And only when there's a 1 times a 1 will it get a count. I'm going to undo this, 
Control-C, is to do double negative, and then put parentheses about around your trues and falses. Now if you highlight this, F9, uh, it gives you our, our desired ones and zeros, Control-Z. Now, our second, just like with count ifs, the second array is going to be this whole column, locked F, F4, F4 locked going down, anytime that's equal to this. And then that one should be locked one, two, three times. Now, that also will give us trues and falses, and we want ones and zeros, so we have to convert them using double negative and parentheses. Control enter, double click, oops, just drag, and then over. All right, so we're getting the same count no matter what. If you're using 2007 or later, this is absolutely preferable. Count ifs calculate faster than the sum product. Still, another option, I'm not going to go through this one in this um, video, but if you didn't, if you couldn't have this helper column here, we'd actually have to simulate this inside of our formula. And so the way we do that is, wow, there'd be a bunch of arrays. There's actually to four total array. We actually have to check is column A not equal to column B, double negative. Then we have to check is column A not equal to column C. Finally, B not equal to C. And then there's our uh, last criteria. And then you copy that down and over. All right, uh, we'll see you next trick.